Hey! I did it. <laughs> you did it. Awesome. How you doing? I am great. How are you? Great. You know, first off, I love your background. That's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Is that one of those like separators you have in the house or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so cool. Yeah. I've seen those on TV, but I've never actually had one in my home. So it actually makes a very dynamic, striking, cool background. So awesome. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've always wanted one. My friend gave it to me and I, she was like, do you want this? I was like, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, first off, everybody, this is V. So, so say hello. Uh, I've been a fan of her content. I was just telling everybody how much of a fan I was of your content for, oh my God, because you've been on talk TikTok for about a year now, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was six months ago, because, uh, of course, all I talk about is divorce and dating and all those other things. And uh, that's all you get on your FYP. And I saw you and I'm like, OK, so I was listening to you. I'm like, oh, my God, she's actually rational. She's actually very calm and she's very collected about divorce. And what I really loved about your content was the uh, the co-parenting tips. Mm -hmm. So that was super amazing. I love that. But for those who don't know, you just kind of give them an introduction of what you do and a little bit about yourself. Um, so I talk a lot about, well, I guess I do. I haven't like talked about co-parenting for a little bit. I talk more about like the divorce and the recovery process about all of that. Um, mm -hmm. But I decided to tell my story because um, not a lot of people are okay with being so vulnerable and being like, I got cheated on and like, this is what happened. Because, um, mm -hmm. of course, like I get the comments that are like, you're just the, you're just bad. You're just a bad picker. <laughs> and so oh, that's kind of scary, God. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, exactly. yeah, so, um, so yeah, so that's what I talk about. I have, a although like my ex-husband cheated on me, he wasn't a good husband. He'll admit that, but we have a really good co-parenting relationship. And I think that that's really important to talk about um, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people that just feel like they have to hate the other person forever. And right. yeah. yeah. And like, listen, I just, that's no way to live. You know, I just, I don't ever want to like hate somebody forever. That's yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Somebody's asking what your handle is. It's 13 day divorce, right? Yes. All, all one word, no underscores. And you know what? I, I, I tried the hate piece for a little bit and uh, just, you know, a little bit about me. I got divorced and, you know, we were married 16 years and I went through therapy before and after the divorce. And that really did help me. So I'm, I'm a big advocate and proponent for therapy. It, I wouldn't be where I'm at today in the mental state and the peace inside if it wasn't for therapy. But I tried the hate piece. And you know what? Hate really affects your body in a negative way. It can really mess up your insides and your, your sleep patterns and really do damage to your body. So I I get the hate because it's easy to cloud and cover up the pain, but hate mm -hmm. is never the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I had realized, so right after my ex-husband had cheated on me, um, when I was sleeping, even when I was awake, like 24 seven, my body was trembling constantly. And oh my, my daughter was sleeping in the bed with me and she can sleep through like anything. And my shaking, like my full body shakes, I was asleep, woke her up. And so I, wow. she, she woke me up. She's like, mommy, are you okay? And I was like, wow, I have to fix this. Like, I cannot let this, mm -hmm. like the trauma just took over my entire life and I had no idea. Yeah. It's very powerful. Hate can do a lot to you. <laughs> it can really mess you up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now let's kind of go back a little bit. So you say you were married. So how long were you married with your husband? Did, were you a high school, maybe college sweethearts? Or how long did y'all know each other? Um, so actually, we got married after knowing each other for just six months. Um, oh, so I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know right there, it's like red flag. That's like kind of mm -hmm. my mistake, right? But we were young. We were together for about seven years. Mm -hmm. Seven years all together. And you have two children, right? Or one? We do, yes. Yep, I have a teenager oh. and a five-year-old. Wow, they grow fast, don't they? They do. Yes. Yes. I have a, a daughter who will be 18 next month and I don't like that. And I, I, I can't stop it. So I just got to go with the flow. So it sucks, but <laughs> she's beautiful yeah. and awesome. And my she's... son is 15. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, yeah, just, they grow. I can't imagine like my kid being a grown up. Like your kid's like a grown yeah. up. <laughs> She pretty much is. Yeah. And she's almost my height. I'm like, hey, stop that. I don't like that. <laughs> but it, it happens so fast. But um, 
So you said seven years. So when did, and I know six months, I kind of get that. I've been in those relationships where you just kind of like the emotions are flying high. You're crazy in love. And looking back, I'm glad there's a lot of decisions I made that didn't fall through uh, Mm -hmm. because I would be in a different situation. But in the seven years, when did you first start seeing that maybe things weren't going to work out or things weren't, you know, things weren't looking good? Honestly, right away. Um, there were signs at the very beginning, but I was so prideful because I had jumped into this marriage and I was like, I got myself into this. I'm going to make it work. Uh, you know, cheating doesn't, a lot of the times it doesn't just happen, you know, like there's a lot of stuff, like, obviously if there's like a bad relationship, sometimes that's what it leads to. But a lot of the time it's from insecurities. And so Mm -hmm. there was a lot of him, talking to other girls that I had found out about before we even said I do. And I didn't know until after Ooh. we said I do. Yeah. Wow. So it was immediate. Yeah. And, you know, that pride, I was like, oh, shoot, I got I got to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, that's um. so. Uh, right. So there were signs before and during and were these like. Um, and the reason I'm asking, because I'll, I'll be as just as, you know, uh, transparent as you are. But was it with people that he worked with or coworkers or? Yeah. The, the, the work spouse. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't get to that. Yeah. So right away, huh? Wow. Okay. And um, when did you first discover that he was cheating? Was it like the seventh year? Like, did you find out right away and that's it? Or did you kind of forgive him and stay with him longer? So uh, the affair happened like a couple years into our marriage. And, you know, a woman's intuition is a magical thing because I could just feel it. Yes. Yeah, it's like the force in Star Wars. It's the most <laughs> accurate, powerful energy in the world. So yes, it's accurate. It it's ninety nine percent accurate. Yes. It's unbelievable because I knew exactly who she was without knowing who she was. Like I had seen her name once, and I was like, I know it's her, and I could just feel it, like my heart, my soul, my stomach, everything. And he was mm-hmm. just straight to my face. No, nothing's going on. And I was like, but my wow. everything is telling me otherwise. Um, so it had gone on for about a year. And then Mm -hmm. I finally found out um, we were actually living in a different state. I went back home. He was like, just go home to your dad. So I went back to Nebraska. I was living with my dad um, and that's where she was. And so I sought her out. She confessed to everything. Um, And then I confronted him and um, he apologized. He was like, hey, I've been trying to end this. It just it just didn't end how I wanted it to. It was a mistake. Um, so Mm -hmm. I forgave him and we worked on things and we stayed together. I want to say like about three years after that. because we had a kid like a year Mm -hmm. and a half ish afterwards. Okay. Okay. Um, and just, I don't know if you see my videos, but, uh, I've been on TikTok about a year and a couple months and it was December of, I think 2020 or 2019, I forget, uh, where I was doing movie review clips because that's where I was. I've, what I've been doing for five years on YouTube, just movie reviews, and I was posting clips, and they never really took off. And then I'm like, well, I'm 43. I got divorced. Let me share some dating stories and divorce stories. And I started sharing videos of why my marriage ended, you know, things like that. And one of the reasons was that I cheated. I cheated. And I was eight years into the marriage. And you're right. There's two. For men, it's for anybody. It's either a, an emotional need or a physical need. And for me, it was an emotional because at the time we got into debt really fast. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of things we wanted to do. She couldn't go back to school because we both had to work full time. So I felt like a failure as a husband because I couldn't give her the life that she wanted and I didn't have the means to, to so she can go back to school. We both had to work. And I just remember just feeling like a failure all the time. And when I try to clean up and do things, I was always just, you're never doing right. You're never doing right. You're never doing right. And I felt like I lost myself. and. Four years later, you know, I just for I was just this empty space, and then somebody else gives you attention, and before you know it, you do something. But it, the decision for me to do that wasn't an immediate decision. It took me a year of me trying to comprehend and just like, uh, this makes sense. Do it. No, don't do it. It took me a year to really think about it. When I finally did it. Uh, I felt like myself if that makes any so any sense whatsoever. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, and um, I immediately felt guilty. I it was eating me away. So I confessed. I told her, "Look, I this is what I did, and it's killing me." 
So that was a, one of the main things that led to the divorce ending. There's other things. Well, another rule I have about my page is not to, you know, um, paint her in a bad light or say anything she did because again, she wasn't an angel either, but I'm only calling out my mistakes. So I tried for like the, the remaining six years to make it up to her. So I was giving her my all and she just couldn't, she said she forgive me, but she just couldn't. And other things came up. Yeah. And finally, after four years of marriage counseling, where I, I didn't see anything happening, we called it. But you're right about the cheating. It's um, it's a horrible thing. And a lot of people think that men, sometimes it's all physical. It really isn't. For some, I'm just saying for all men, for some men, it isn't. It was an emotional need. I just felt like I was just uh, not appreciated at home. I felt like she didn't respect me. Everything I did, she just belittle me uh, and things like that. And I just felt like I was lost. And that's yeah. one of the reasons I did it. Yeah, definitely. So there's been something that I've been wanting to talk about. I just don't know how to frame the conversation. Um, right. Right. So we're going to like throw it out here and see and yeah, figure it out it. and I'll make a video on it hopefully tomorrow. But um, something awesome. I realized after I got divorced was, um, are you into like feminine and masculine energy? Do you like... <laughs> Talk I've been reading that. up on it lately. Uh, there's a podcast I did a couple of weeks back where I studied on it. And I understand that I have a mix of it, more masculine, but there's some feminine qualities in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, for me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So because I was raised by my dad, all I knew was masculine energy. And oh. for yes, it's been very interesting for me. And so I realized after like assessing myself, I have only been with men that have negative relationships with their dads. And I think that they were drawn to mm. each other because I have a very strong masculine energy and I yeah. kind of replaced that for them, which is a really interesting dynamic. Right. Yeah. But on top of that, part of like the part of being like having feminine energy is um, we expect men to be our warriors. You guys have to go out and um, you protect our homes. You provide for our homes. You do all of these things. But mm -hmm. when you come back to us, we should be your safe space. Right. But a right. lot of the times when when we're frustrated and we're not seeing eye to eye, you come home to friendly fire. And that is like a really hard lesson that I've like Ooh. really taken in um, and mm -hmm. like really put that onto myself of like, although he cheated, I don't blame myself for it. Right. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't bringing him home to a safe place. I was I was bringing him home to friendly fire. And that's sucks. That's hard. And that's a hard realization for myself that I didn't mm -hmm. love him and support him enough. Just like you, like you felt belittled. And my ex will say the same exact thing because I'm sure I said the same stuff that she probably said to you, you know? Wow. And yeah. So it's been, it's been an interesting realization. For, for those who just maybe, cause I know, um, can you give everybody a, like a real world, like scenario example of friendly fire? Like, what do you mean by that? Um, so kind of like the belittling, you know, like, uh, he would come home and instantly like, um, oh, a g really good one that a lot of people complain about yeah. a lot of women is guys come home and they shed all of their stuff everywhere. Right. So yeah. we're like constantly cleaning and you come home and your boots are over here, your socks are over here, your keys, everything's everywhere. Right. And that's, yeah. it drives us insane. Like just put your yeah. socks in amper right <laughs> and that's something that like and it starts like small and then it gets to other things you know like you come home from work you sit on the couch without showering you're in your underwear like the couch stinks now and it starts yeah. with like little things right and, mm -hmm. and then it builds to other things because if you're constantly nagging then it turns into like how he's driving or you know you always pick the movie and i never get to and it starts yeah. with like those like little you get things. mad at him with all the bumps in the road like watch how you're driving like it's the street you know things like that. yes <laughs> yeah and it starts small but for a man who's already like being that figure of like the protector for the family like my ex-husband we're obviously we're not together but i still tell my children he's still the protector of our family he's your dad mm -hmm. he's still kind of in a way um not necessarily runs the family, but he definitely like we go places together and he always drives. You know, yeah. we know that if there was like a situation that God forbid something crazy happened, he would be the one to go handle something. And I stay with the kids and we just have that understanding awesome. that we're a family unit. Um, mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, it's very interesting. So, 
Let me ask you this because uh, your dynamic with your ex-spouse is almost identical to the one I have with my ex-wife. Like when I told the kids we were getting divorced, I told them, look, just because we're getting divorced doesn't mean we're not a family. We're still going to be a family. I expect you to respect your mom and I expect you to listen to her when I'm not around and vice versa. We're going to help each other out. And uh, I, we, we were, we're still fine to this day. She just recently got remarried and I, her husband's an awesome dude. We all get along great. Uh, but I remember I, this is something I never thought about until it happened is, until we started dating other people. And when you date other people, they're the ones who get jealous of the relationship. So have you encountered that yet with your ex-spouse? Yes. And how did that go? Um, it ended an engagement of mine. <laughs> oh my God. Did it really? Oh, so you, it was your fiance who had a problem with your, the relationship. Yes. Yeah, so, um, we were set to get married a couple, it's about a year and a half ago now. Um, and uh, I started dating him like shortly after I had gotten divorced. I thought he was like my everything. Um, mm -hmm. so the first time meeting my ex-husband, he, uh, my ex had picked up the kids. They went and did like a whole day together and then they came back and we're all hanging out. We're talking about their day. Um, of course, like my ex meets my new guy and my ex leaves and my new guy was like, you guys felt like a family. And I didn't feel like I was part of that. And I was like, and oh. then from there on out, it was just done. I was like, all right, I think I need to step away because that dynamic can't change. You know, yeah, like we absolutely. don't touch, we don't kiss, we don't, we don't even flirt. We're just, you know, parents. We talk about our kids. And if somebody can't handle that dynamic, Mm hmm. Out of yeah. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it's funny because uh, I can kind of relate to that in a sense, because it's always that first uh, uh, love that you meet uh, after your divorce. That's the hardest and it really devastates you. It, oh, I totally understand that. And uh, my circumstance was where she was jealous. Like, why are you talking? Does she have to call you every day? Why are you all texting all the time? I'm like, we're talking about my daughter's softball schedule. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? No, that's too much. And I'm like, this, I can't do it. So that just boils up. And it's really their own insecurity. If they can't trust yeah. you, uh, you know, and your ex-husband because of the, the dynamic you have. And again, it is different because you hear the norm of most divorced couples hating each other. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare, like for you and I and our exes to have that dynamic of disrespect and the kids are first. I wish more people put the kids first. But yeah. I had to end that relationship and she dated a guy uh, like a couple years back. And this guy hated me. He hated him. He was an older guy, like almost 60. I'm like, why are you dating a 60 year old? You're 45. Like, come on. Like, hey, anyway, <laughs> he hated me. And he thought that we were still messing around like or that she still loved him. I'm like, no, love me. And I'm like, no, we just, we put the kids first. So, and I'm glad that you didn't allow him to get in between because it's heartbreaking when you hear stories where, the husband or wife meets somebody and they totally just alienate the kids yes. and forget about their family and move on. Yeah, that's, I can't, I can't even imagine. There's just, there's nothing that's worth that for me. Like exactly. not even a little bit. Nobody yeah. comes close whatsoever. Yeah. Whatsoever. You know, like we, my, my kids did not ask to be born. <laughs> we made that decision. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Oh my God. God. I, and let me ask you this. Um, because, again, you see it on TikTok and we see all these heartbreaking stories where, you know, the parents are going to the exchange for the kids and, you know, they're fighting in front of the kids. Um, like, why do you think that is? Like, other than immaturity, why do you think a lot of people simply just cannot uh, put the kids first and act like adults in those situations? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's I don't think that people we learn a lot in school, right? But we do not learn how to manage our feelings. And it's Definitely. taught throughout our entire lives that we should just hate people. Like, it's okay to hate people. It's okay to fight people. Um, mm -hmm. And truthfully, like, this is how I feel. I mm -hmm. loved my ex-husband so much. And, and I still love my ex-husband. I'm not in love with him, but I love him. He's the father of my children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if I, if I say that I truly loved my ex-husband, why am I going to continue to hurt him? I agree. I agree. I don't, I just don't feel like if I ever truly loved him, I could make him put him through pain. It's just, that's how I feel anyway. Yeah. 
And, and for me, um, like I said, um, I will always love my ex-wife. She was my high school sweetheart. We got, I got married at 21. I'm 40. We got married at uh, 21. I got divorced at 39. So it was really all I'd ever known, but I just knew it was over. But yeah, I will always love her and I'm glad she's happy with a good man and, you know, she's doing her thing. But I just couldn't ever understand how some people use the kids or maybe be little, like tell the kids, who's your mom dating now? You know, that uh, slut, whatever. She left me for that guy, yeah. whatever. And then it makes the kids feel horribly uncomfortable because now they don't know if they should pick sides or feel bad for their mom or dad. It, yeah. it breaks my heart when you see those stories on, on, on social media. It, it's just, yes. I wish people put the kids first. Definitely. And you know, like a really hard part about that is that those videos are the ones that get so many likes and so many comments and it's like, it's encouraged. And, yes. that's, and that's a big reason why I started to talk about my divorce was because I wanted to change the narrative. Like your kids really shouldn't have to go through all of that. It's awful. I no. can't, I mean, also like if you love your kids, why are you going to hurt them? Cause that's all that does. Yes. I told my ex-husband, I said, I want you to find the most amazing woman. I want her to love our children. I want her to love you. I want to be her best friend. And that's genuine because that yes. will make our lives easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and is he the same with you? Um, I mean, did he, I mean, does he feel the same way toward you as far as like wanting you to find a good man or is there a little, or is it kind Absolutely. of slightly off? No, okay. he's very supportive of like me dating, me finding somebody. We both want each other to be happy. So it works out really well. And how do you, um, and I guess what I'm trying to uh, maybe figure out is how did it end that way? Like um, he cheated on you, you, you tried for a few more years and finally you chose to uh, end the marriage. So it's not like he, I don't think he left you for another woman or you left him for another man. It was like a clean break. So do you think that really had a big piece and the way you guys respected each other and kind of felt toward one another? Well, actually, so we were all supposed to, we had this really big plan that we had been working on for a few years. We were going to move across the country because he wanted to live in a different state. And okay. um, so we had, I mean, we planned out for years and he got a job about six months earlier than we had anticipated. So I stayed so that our older one could finish the school year because we didn't want to pull her halfway through the year. Um, and about two and a half, three months after he moved, he called me and said, I don't want to be married anymore. Oh. And I was like, I'm a stay at home mom halfway across the country <laughs> from all of yeah. my family. And you want to end this yeah. now? We planned this for like three years. Um, oh my God. so that was harsh. Um, but you know, honestly, like the very first thing I did was I called my dad and I talk about all the time, like the advice my dad gave me. And that's literally what he said to me. I'm bawling on the phone and he's like, stop crying. He was in the army. He's like, stop crying right now. And I'm like, <laughs> but my husband just <laughs> left me. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, seriously, like, and my dad adores my ex-husband. Nobody can say anything bad about my ex-husband. My dad just loves him, which is great. Like he's neutral. Um, but he's like, you have to treat this like a business. You're going to have to deal with this man forever. And your yeah. kids are truly your investment in your future. And so what do you want to do for them? Wow. What do you want that to look like? Wow. And you know, I saw that video. I, like I said, I've been watching your videos for quite some time and I know you're raised by a single dad and your dad's this is an amazing influence on you, which is, um, it speaks for itself because I don't know if you've seen the video I did. It was where my I did a tribute to my daughter and it went, it went viral. Like I just did digitize like videos when she was newborn until now she's 18 and it blew up. And like, I made three and a half million people cry. But what broke my heart in the comments is like, there's one comment with 120,000 likes with women crying and daddy issues. And you read the comments and there is no father involved. And it, it just breaks my heart because again, I, being a father, I know what kind of important role that is. And speaking yeah. with you and just how well grounded you are, and you know, from your, your decision making, everything you are is is a testament to him. Correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And my dad never played that card of like my dad was always really supportive of my mom, even though like my mom just didn't want to be part of our lives. Um, but he was never gonna like bad talk her or anything. So I had that good example. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, that is so heartbreaking. I And I think that that's so my following, I've really struggled with this, too, of like how to balance my male and female audience, because for mm -hmm. a long time, I was like 70, 30 with mostly men. Um, and I think it's hard for a lot of women to accept that a woman can be OK 
after a man has cheated on her. Like she's okay with that guy. Um, so mm-hmm. I've had like a lot of people be like, Oh, she's a pick me girl, like whatever. Um, mm-hmm. and that's really sad to me because it's not about that. It's about my kids and my forgiveness for myself. You know, it's not, it's not because I, I want <laughs> a bunch of men's attention. I had yeah. a great dad. <laughs> I had yeah. all the attention I needed when I was a kid. <laughs> so, and I think that that's something in our society that we struggle with. I know that, um, mental health for men was you just made a video about that with like um accepting that you're going to be the bad guy in a divorce um yes. i actually had that too because i had lost a bunch of baby weight right before the divorce and nobody okay. knew that anything was going on so a lot of people were spreading rumors about me that i lost my baby weight and i was going to go after his money and all i wanted to do was mess around and i was like mm-hmm. That's not even it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Isn't it funny how people can just come up with the craziest stories with no, you don't even talk to them, but they just generate this, this the yes. idea. It's like, you know, what? It blows my mind because I'm, I'm the same way. I went through the same thing. Yeah, it's terrible. And so, um, and that's something like we neglect men's mental health, which I think contributes to men cheating because they have this low self-esteem because we're, we're neglecting their mental health. And then at the same time, we have women who are so hard, they're so hardened and they feel like they have to be like these independent women that don't need men. And yeah, we do. I mean, it it takes a man and a woman, you know, like it does. Yeah. Yeah. And I, (laughs) go ahead. I feel like I can like, I can survive on my own, right? Like I can do Mm -hmm. all of those things, but truthfully do what I love to have a husband. Absolutely. You know, that Mm -hmm. would only. Oh, I think the signal drops everything. Uh Oh, okay. The signal dropped for a second and it froze. Are you there? Are you back? Okay. Yes. What was that last comment you said? Cause it froze the last 10 seconds. Um, I think, let me see. Um, I said that, um, (laughs) I'm like, what, where was I at? Um, I said that like, obviously I would love to have a husband, um, because that only adds to my life, you know, like, I'm not going to say that like, I need somebody. Right. But truthfully, that's, that's how it would be a great life. You know, what's funny is our accounts are almost like the polar, the same, but different because my following is 80% women and 20% men. And a lot of guys call me simp and blue pill. I'm like, I don't subscribe to any of those stupid ideologies. I'm a, I'm a man and I'm going to go my own way with logical thinking. But uh, there's like a lot of guys who like, who hate their wives or maybe hate their girlfriends. And now they just have all this resentment. And I'm all about taking accountability, man. I'm like, okay, you're hurt. You broke up. But did you ignore all the red flags? Because I know every time I have my heart broken, I ignored the red flags because I was just too Google Gaga over what was in front of me. So you really can't blame the person that broke your heart. In some cases, you really got to go back and say, could I have made better decisions? And whenever I preach that, I get the whole simp, you know, oh, you're just one, you're a pick me guy. Uh, You want to get married again? Like, no, I don't want to get married again. But, you know, I kind of get the same backlash as you when it comes to that. And uh, a lot of the the comments you've said uh, earlier, I I can, I can't say those because I've said things similar to that. And I know I've pissed off like a whole page of people that just <laughs> bombard me with hate and misogynistic comments. Like, I'm not a misogynist. Y'all know what that means? I don't hate women. <laughs> but I'm bombarded with that. So it's like, there's some things I can't really touch on, especially um, what women go through. Like what you just said a few minutes ago, that men do go through some sort of abuse. Like when it comes to the belittling and the friendly fire comment that you mentioned earlier, I remember I stated that, like, uh, I understand, you know, women go through a lot of things, but, Really, you have to think about your husband's mental health and what the stress is he's going through. And then I said that in one video like last year and I come up, our, what about us? We had your kids and you, what did we clean your house and we do all these things? You know, what about us? You know, y'all are selfish. You know, we're lazy. And like, oh, my God. I'm like, it's true, though. Mental health is a very important thing. And it's I think it's uh, important for both people, husband and wife, to really just be cognizant of what they say to their husband or wife, because words hurt. Yeah, absolutely. especially for the person who yeah. So first of all, I have to say that I'm kind of relieved that you get those similar comments because I was oh, like, yeah. man, is it just <laughs> is it just me? But you know what I get from that is that we are so focused on me and me yes. and we're not focused on us. And that is really, really sad. 
Yeah, and that kind of goes back to my, what I always preach in my videos as well. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old were you when you got married? Uh, 20, I think I was 24, 24. 24. I've always spoken on my videos, don't get married in your 20s. And the, the reason I say that is because you see, you're nodding yes because you've been married. Everybody who's been married agrees with me, but the ones <laughs> who haven't, oh, we're not going to make mistakes like you, man. Okay. You know, <laughs> better. everybody said that, including yes. myself. But what I always preach in the videos is that you don't know who you are at a young age. You don't know what you can handle. And a lot of people go into a marriage with the idea of the wedding and living happily ever after, but they never think about the bad times like, I bring up one of one of what if you have a stillborn? Can you handle that? What if because I've had friends who've had stillborns and I've seen it devastate their marriage and they get divorced because it's just they weren't expecting that. Or if one of you gets laid off, can you handle the financial burden? Or what if one of you gets injured and you can't dance anymore? You're not the same anymore. Like a, what if your wife has postpartum depression and she's a totally different woman? Yeah. Uh, are you ready for that? They don't think about all those real life things that can happen. Mm -hmm. And they quit. I've had so many women reach out to me and tell me that their husband left them in the emergency room bed because they couldn't handle the stress of their cancer or any of their, their health complications. And I've had men tell me women left them because they got injured on the job. And they couldn't provide them the six figure life they were used to. And the women left them. I just wish people before you got married at a young age, learn from us, everybody who's watching. You want to see your spouse in the dark moments at their lowest and at their highest. Like, how do they react uh, when they're in a bad moment? Do they blame you? Do they start drinking? You, you want to see all those behaviors. And I think a lot of people just go into marriage with the wrong idea. What are your thoughts on that? Why do you think so many people like get divorced? And what do you think about that? I I completely agree. I think that first of all, like you just don't, um, a lot of people just don't take the time. They don't take the time to really learn somebody and accept that person and how they react to things. Cause that's a yes. huge deal. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I think that also it's just, it's easy to get divorced. I mean, like, it's not easy, right? Like it's a whole process, yeah. but it's so accepted to just like, we're just going to end this and that it is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people have commented, like, you should have gotten counseling. Like, I got my own counseling. We had marriage counseling. We were actually so toxic together that we went to a counselor and she said, get a divorce. <laughs> Our counselor oh, told us to get divorced. Seriously? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a professional advice right there. It's ready. God. Thank you. That. That's so funny. Not funny, but oh, my God. I just, you don't expect to hear that from a counselor. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, man. I was like, I think we wow. need a counselor. <laughs> yeah, at least a second opinion yeah. or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, we definitely switched. It's, it's I funny. Like, I feel like maybe. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, I just said that like we, we did end up switching after that. I was like, I feel like we should really talk to somebody else because we're actually trying to work on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question here and. You know, some general questions I want to ask. Uh, somebody says you're very beautiful. Like, well, there's that. Okay. Uh, how does, why does divorce hurt so much? Let, you go ahead and answer that. Why do you think divorce hurts so much to some? So, you know what? Um, there's a lot of reasons, but I was actually going to make a video on this. Um, part of you jumping into a marriage um, prematurely and a lot of people falling for like somebody's potential because we have this idea of what our marriage is going to be, Right. And yes. what we what we do is we kind of hurt our own selves by falling for somebody's potential, because does this person want what we have in mind? Do they want to yeah. be that person? You know, mm -hmm. but also you take away from yourself because when you're falling for somebody's potential and when you have this idea, you're not allowing that person to get to know you because all you want is this idea. But but they don't know you. They don't even know what that idea is. Exactly. And, so we have to like take a step back because we really break our own hearts. We really do. Oh God, the potential piece. Yes, uh, I'll fix him. I'll work on him. He's got problems, but I'm a, I'm gonna work on him. Like no, ladies, guys, never, <laughs> ever, ever go and get married or get into a relationship with that. Especially thinking marriage will fix it. Yes. No, no, and neither will a baby. Please. <laughs> God, no, no. You'll be on this high of like, oh, it's going to be great. But then reality kicks in. No, no, no. no it's awful. Don't yes. It. There is Don't no mechanic God. when it comes to love. You cannot fix a person. 
they can only fix themselves. Yes, and, exactly. And very few people ever take make the effort to do that. So don't ever think you can change somebody. Absolutely. Oh, got it. Is, is that what you, what you did? You married potential? Is that what uh, you did with your, your marriage? Yeah, absolutely. I I saw, you know, when he first met me, it was like puppy eyes. And he seemed like he just loved me so much. And I was like, oh, I hadn't been in like great relationships before that. And I was like, oh, this is so great. He really loves me. And it could be this. <laughs> and I was like, it could be this. He had, he did not know what I had in my head. <laughs> I broke my own wow. life, honestly. <laughs> for, for me, um, I was raised uh, by my, my mom and my sister, and of course my dad. My dad was, both my parents were involved in my life. But I remember hearing happy wife, happy life. And I know that's not a term that I advise anybody to approach with, but Gen X people, and very like my area, make your wife happy. You do everything right, you make her happy, everything will be fine. And that's kind of like the rules and procedures I went into with a marriage. And then as the years went on, I find, I discovered the hard way, like we all learn our lessons, right? Is that you can't make somebody happy if they're not happy with themselves. No matter <laughs> what, no matter what you do, you're never going to fill that void in their heart. No matter how much you show them and, you know, demonstrate your love for them. It doesn't matter. You can't make somebody happy if they're not happy with themselves. And happy wife, happy life is so one-sided. My grandma told me that too. And she's like, she was born in 1920. But uh, you make your wife happy, you listen to her. Yes, ma'am, you know, things like that. And no, it's so one-sided. Before you know it, um, I left all the decisions to her. Like, whatever you want, honey, whatever you want, happy. Would you make a decision? I remember one day she told me, would you make a decision already? I'm like, what? That kind of threw my pro <laughs> me off. I'm like, oh, what, me? <laughs> but I'll, you decide for your happiness. And I just realized that. That's not a way to approach marriage. It has to be happy life, happy whatever. I can't come up with a clever rhyme right now, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to agree with that. I think there's just so much like we're we're such a selfish society, honestly. I think that that's what a lot Mm -hmm. of this comes down to is that we are just so focused on me that we neglect the fact that like you're a team. Like you are absolutely you a team. Yeah. You have to. Uh, another thing with us is that looking back, you know, if I, if I ever get married, which I'm not, but if I ever do, it, you have to put your wife or husband first and then the kids. You can't put the kids above your spouse. And that's one thing, you know, when your parents, you get crazy for the kids or everything. There's that unconditional love. And I remember as the years went on for me, I forgot about my wife. And before you know it, you just see a mom and uh, we're just parents. We just weren't husband and wife anymore. And I'm talking like five years of doing this straight every day, neglecting the wife part. And I remember, oh my God, I can't unsee that now. It was so weird. Yeah. And I remember, I remember being that too. I just felt like I was just a mom. That was it. That was all I was. I was just a mom. I wasn't even a wife. Yeah. So funny how routine could put us in that place, right? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So so let me ask you this. Um, If anybody, because again, I I get many people messaging me saying they're thinking about divorce or contemplating it. So for anybody who's watching, if they're planning on getting divorced, what advice would you give them? Like, what would you advise them to approach this major step in their life? Um, if they've already come to a point where it's a like joint decision and they're like, for sure, I never try to like convince somebody to get a divorce, right? Because divorce is yeah. absolute crap. <laughs> but if yeah, they're ready to, yes, um, I would say, um, really assess what you want for your future and keep your future in mind because what you do now really determines your life later. Um, and if you are just like so so bitter and hurt that you are constantly arguing that's just going to continue to carry on throughout the rest of your life and that's not that's not what you want that's why I wanted to end mine really quickly because I didn't want it to be this this thing that we were constantly fighting about you know like I didn't want him to be like well you took this and you took that and I said take everything I don't care like you can have whatever you want in the house like that is not something I'm going to fight about um yeah so, so you gave them everything. You didn't fight for anything like um, so, bought together or homes, things like that. Uh, so we split. So we had three homes when we got divorced. So we split the money from that 50 50. 
Um, but mm-hmm. the home that we lived in, he wasn't living there at the time. He came back. And yeah, I told him, I said, you can take everything. We had two TVs. He took both TVs. Um, I told, uh, yeah, I said, you could have whatever you want. I did actually, I took our vacuum because I have the dog. And he was actually kind of mad at me about that. He was like, you took the nice vacuum. I was like, but I have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a Dyson. Those are really nice. I love my Dyson. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, if I can just rewind for a second, I want to just kind of acknowledge one, your bravery, uh, because people don't know this until you get divorced. It's um, I was really astonished that a lot of people, when they hear people got divorced, they think of us as quitters or failures. And you just have this stigma that follows you for a while. And then you forget you don't even give a damn what people think about you. But it takes like you just said, you, you want it to end it now. That takes Brave, that takes balls. It's bravery. All right. It takes a lot to end a life and go out into the unknown, not knowing what's out there. I know many people who have chosen to stay in the safety of what they've always known versus doing what's right for them, their happiness. And, you know, in most cases are kids to go out there and file for divorce. So, again, I just want to acknowledge your bravery in doing that because it's not it's not an easy decision whatsoever to make. And it's taken time to really to get to that point, but it's a tough decision. One of the tough, in my opinion, one of the toughest decisions I've ever made. Absolutely. Yeah. So kudos to you. And um, again, like um, it's pretty cool that your dad was with you and he kind of put things in perspective for you and kind of like uh, it's it's all how you see things, right? Yeah. And I love how he framed that that uh, business model with you and how to approach that. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. So he was supportive of your, of your decision. Um, yeah, he was definitely like a huge part of that and how I responded to everything. I mean, obviously, like my ex is the one who wanted out so that he wasn't part of like that decision. But of course, he was part of the letting go like you have to let go. And um, something else that he had said to me was that I had a choice, I could be the bitter woman that everybody knows everybody knows that bitter woman. Or I could show my ex grace and I could move on. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm moving on because I did not want to be that woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've dated a few of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. like, that's not well, that takes us to dating. So um, how long did you wait before you put yourself back out there and went into the dating world? And did it shock you like it shocked me and how things were totally different from the 90s? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, like mm. online dating. What is this? <laughs> I had it's never like, done like online dating before. Yeah. I hate I hate it. I don't. I'm not a fan. I won't. I've tried it and I won't ever do it. Um, But I did. Honestly, I started dating right away because I felt like um, I hadn't been with very many people before I met my ex-husband. And like my my marriage was so awful for so long that I was like, I'm just going to see what's out there. I'm going to see what this world is like and figure Mm -hmm. out who I am and what I like, because I don't even know what I like, you know? Um, So. So I, I feel like I dated pretty quickly. Um, do I partially wish I would have waited? Yes and no. Um, honestly, I don't think I knew how to heal myself at that point. And so I don't mm-hmm. regret my decision because dating people and learning the types of people that were out there really taught me a lot. So I don't regret that at all. Okay. Um, for well, That makes sense. For me, I, I waited about a month. Before I, I did it a month. I know that's not a long time, but like I mentioned earlier, I was I went through six months of therapy before the divorce and a couple months afterwards. So I was really in a healthy place on making the decision and knowing it was the right one. So I remember I didn't want anything serious. I just went out there dating uh, just to have fun. And that's what I told everybody. Like, look, I just got divorced. And it's funny when you go into the dating world and you tell women that you're divorced, none of them believe you. <laughs> oh sure you are i'm like you don't believe me like where's the proof i'm like you want to see my decree and i actually had a pdf on my phone i'm like well here's the pdf oh my god he's really divorced so i'm like i had a people nickname me the pdf guy because i had to show women i was divorced the pdf on my phone <laughs> that is so funny oh my gosh yeah apparently a lot of guys who are married lie about being divorced so yeah. i don't blame them they're just being sure but uh Dating for me, like you said, the whole, the whole dating app thing, um, I took to it fairly fast. I found it incredibly easy to get a date because, again, the last time I was single was 1998. And that's like the last century where, as I said before in other videos, that you know you had to get dressed, go to a place where there was women, 
approach them, dance with them, hang out with them, get their number, then go on a date or something like that. So it took a lot of effort to meet somebody. Here, you're just, you're just okay. And we matched up a couple of texts and it was so easy and so weird. And I hated the first impression a woman got from me being a text. I just hated that. I prefer approaching people up front versus a text. Because if you say the wrong thing, you know, they're going to ignore you. Yes. Yes. I am not a fan. I would much rather meet somebody organically face to face and have like real conversations. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. I I won't ever use a dating app again. Really? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I I have a girlfriend and it's funny because my girlfriend now I've been with her for two years. It's so cool because there was this one moment where a couple of months back, where she's here i'm making dinner with her my kids we split custody my kids are with me upstairs right now but we split seven days on seven days off but my son's with me full time so it's my daughter that goes back and forth and i remember there's this one sunday evening no saturday where my girlfriend's in the kitchen with me and then my ex-wife and her husband come into the house and they are dropping off my daughter and they said they were going to a bar and uh my my girlfriend's like oh i can take y'all the bar was like you know just a couple miles away and would you mind? No. And I see them talking and I'm talking to her husband. And I'm like, this is nice. We're all getting along great. You know, my girlfriend's taking them to the bar. She's going to come right back. That's yeah. the way it should be. It, that's the way it should be. And it felt like a wonderful, like a self-awareness moment that yes. I wish a lot of people had. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly how it should be. And like for your kids to understand that Although like divorce is really hard and not an easy decision and not what we wanted, it's okay to be okay with that and to move on and be happy for somebody. It's such a good example to set for your kids. Especially, and a lot of my my kids' friends are divorced. And I hear the horror stories where, you know, the dad's now an alcoholic or a drug addict and or the dad took off or the mom has boyfriends over all the time. And I'm like, really? And they're saying that. Uh, I was very selective uh, with my kids. They've only met three women. Out of all the women I dated, I was crazy for a while. But I was very selective in just who they met Mm -hmm. because I wanted to protect them at all costs. And I think a lot of people should really do that as well. Yeah, definitely. And I know, I feel like um, some people who have their kids all the time, they find it difficult because they want this person in their life. And so, you know, it, it becomes like this difficult like thing, like, well, my kids are my life. So you have to kind of meet them. Um, but I agree. It's a really tough thing because if your kids get attached to this person and then they leave, Uh, that's heartbreaking on them too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you good on time right now? I know we've been on for about maybe now. You're good. Okay. So everybody, I don't know if you got anybody in your chat area, but if you have any questions for us, go ahead and throw them our way. This is your first live, right? It is my very first live. (laughs) Wow. And you've been doing this for a year. I mean, like you have what? 80,000, 70,000? 72. I just hit 72. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. It's not easy. Oh, my God. Um, I've been the first live. I remember I was really nervous for some reason. I didn't know what to talk about. But the more you do it, you get the hang of it. And then before you know it, you have this community of people that show up all the time. And it's really fun. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thank you for being here on your first live. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. No, no problem. Let's see here. Any questions? Let's see. Rudy, do you know when you cheated that your marriage is over? Um, n- no. If I can, I have, this is back in 2006. So let me get back to my mind and that mindset. No, um, it was, like I said, for my own reasons, you can call them selfish if you like, but I was really in a bad place. I thought I could hide it. Uh, like most people just get what I needed over here uh, and just go with the flow and just kind of keep it incognito. But I didn't think it was over because believe it or not, I still loved my ex-wife. And I know that makes no sense whatsoever. It makes no sense. I was just, I was at a very lonely place and I wasn't getting that at home. I went somewhere else, but I was still up. So no, I did not know it was over. I thought there was still hope. If that, I know that makes no sense whatsoever. Let's see. How do men feel about the relationship with the dad? Her dad? Well, uh, I guess the like, question is, is that toward uh, V? Cool name, by the way, V. That's so cool. Oh, God. <laughs> how do men feel about the relationship with the dad? I guess that's geared toward you. So how do you, the men you date feel about that? Um, towards my kid's dad. Um, you know, for secure men, um, 
it's not an issue. I'm like seeing somebody right now and it's not an issue at all. Like he knows my situation. He knows that that's not going to change. And he's accepted that. Uh, I think that it's, it's all about like understanding somebody's situation. And obviously like, I'm not going to cheat on somebody and I'm completely open and honest about everything. Um, And I think that that's where you have to like, really be careful. It's not necessarily always how the guy feels. It's how you make them feel. Like if you're making them feel secure in that relationship. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, I wish more women, people in general thought like you, that's absolutely correct because they can feel like they don't belong. If they have no sense of belonging or like mm-hmm. need in that space, they won't feel like relevant. So that makes total sense. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, she says no towards your dad, having a strong male figure in, in, in your life. How do the men feel about your dad? Um, honestly, everybody loves my dad. People like my ex-husband <laughs> loves to drink with my dad. And so, um, yeah, nobody has because, and I think it's because although my dad has a very strong influence in my life, the whole time I was married, my dad gave me no marriage advice whatsoever. My dad refuses awesome. when I'm in a relationship because he doesn't want to give me advice that ends up being bad advice. Um, yeah. And so the the first time he had ever given me relationship advice was when I got divorced. Um, and so, yeah, men don't have a problem with that. My dad's like super chill and laid back. So they love him. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. he sounds like a cool guy. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> A uh, question for uh, both of us, but you answer this first. Uh, we have a question here. It says, how long should you be in a relationship before marriage talk should come up? Ooh, that's a really hard question. Um, mm-hmm. But on, I'm going to be honest. I'm upfront about it. Um, I don't I don't date for sport anymore. There was a time where I just wanted to date just to learn and, you know, be free and whatever. Um, now yeah. I want a husband. So if that's not what you want, then this doesn't need to go any further. So um, not that I necessarily want to say I want to marry you, but I say, this is what I'm looking for. So if that's not what you're, what you're looking for, then there's no point in us going any further. That's a very interesting uh, answer. So let me ask you this. So let's say you do meet a guy and he's like, well, I want a wife. So you both are on the same page as far as what you're looking for. How long do you wait before you can assess if he's actually the one you want to marry. I guess that's a other way to turn around the question she's asking. Mm -hmm. So how long do you wait on that? Oh, I feel like it just kind of depends on the person because if they say that they want a wife, but they're throwing red flags, (laughs) then (laughs) you know, it could be over pretty quickly. (laughs) Um, So I guess it just depends on like your communication and, and Mm. um, their consistency and just what they actually show me because words don't mean anything to me. Um, Show me. So it just, I feel like that depends. That's a hard question. One of my favorite 90s songs, show me, show me. Anyway, anyway, I forget the name of the song. Anyway, for me to answer that question is I wait. I've learned patience in my old age. So, and I'm I'm 44, so I'm not that old, but I'm old. Um, I remember in my dating life, whenever before the emotions would actually come into play, I thought 90 days was a good estimate to gauge who a person is. I know that sounds stupid saying it out loud because, you know, they, they're they putting the best foot forward. And after the 90s, the real person will surface. Now, uh, for me, I think a year or two. I want to see yeah. them at their worst. I want to see them, how they handle stressful situations, uh, medical situations with either of us that come up. And um, I've been very upfront with this with my girlfriend. Like, I don't foresee myself getting married. It's not on my agenda. I was married 16 mm-hmm. years. And everybody I dated, and that's one thing women respected, even though it wasn't the answer they wanted to hear, was that I was out front. Look, I just got divorced. I'm not looking to get married. I'm not looking for anything serious. I want to have some fun. If that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But I am not going to lead you on or tell you something that you don't want to hear. I don't want to get married. And even now, marriage to me is not necessity. But maybe in a few years, maybe when the kids move out, I'll see life differently because my life is heavily centered around them. And they're about at that age where they'll leave soon, hopefully. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, marriage is not on the table for me. Uh, it's something that I don't want to do because I just want to focus on myself for a bit. So to answer your question, um, if you're looking to get married, I would say find somebody like B said, who is looking for the same thing as you are, but just wait, be patient, see them in all seasons and see how that goes and then decide. I will add to that. That 90 day thing is so important because I kind of do the same thing, but 
within that first 90 days, I don't allow my, my emotions to get attached to that person. That's a yes. trial run. That's like a job. <laughs> like this is your yes. probation period <laughs> before exactly. I attach any of my feelings to you. <laughs> you. That's so smart. That's what I advise women on my page is like, because again, what I noticed when I went out dating is one, there were a lot of people, men and women who didn't want to be alone. They were terrified of being alone. So they just dated. And second, they allowed their emotions to get the best of them or like had, I can't say the word sags right away. And for me, that can be a very intimate act. And really you can connect to somebody on a chemical level at that point. And that's when emotions can really just get wild and crazy. And if you don't know them that well and the heartbreak happens, you know, things could really crumble and burn right away. So I always advise people like, you know, if you can avoid the physical piece a little bit and, and you, because, you know, you can control yourself emotionally, hold off on that, get to know them a little bit and date and get to know them as a person and then allow yourself to be vulnerable on that side. But just be careful with that. So yes. I think a lot of people just do it a little too soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I have a really good one. Somebody asked how to communicate your divorce with your kids, healthy ways to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that I we did it as a team. We try to do as much as we can as a team. But also, um, don't be afraid to put your kids in counseling because uh, yeah. they might feel, one, like it's their fault or they feel like they have to choose sides. Um, so giving them a neutral person that they can confide in that's like, you know, they, they don't have to tell mom and dad every, anything, you know, like you can go in there and you can vent and you can talk about this. And if you want us to come in, we'll come in. Um, so mm -hmm. like my daughter has been in counseling um, for probably four or five years now. Um, and that's like a really healthy outlet for her. And when she comes to a point where she's like, I have a problem with you, then I go in there and we talk about oh. it. Um, so giving kids like that safe space, I think is really important to just let them figure some things out with somebody who's outside, especially if you yeah. guys are arguing to really yes. make sure that like you give them that space because they're really going to be confused on like who they can talk to and what they can say. Yeah. And again, if I could just piggyback off your answer. Yeah. Same way. That's how I told my kids. We told them as a team and um, it, it, it's not an easy situation to be, but again, kids, everyone's worried about their kids. Like I don't want to get divorced because my kids Well, kids will follow your lead. If you're, if you're well behaved and you control situations, don't let things get out of control. They'll they'll be okay. They just need that role model to look up to and um, know that everything's fine. Because as soon as they see mommy crying or daddy yelling, they're going to freak out. So just yeah. be the adult in those situations. Uh, be that role model. And I always made it a point to make sure they were heard. Like uh, if they wanted to say something, we gave them the platform. Just go ahead, speak your mind. What are you mad? You, you can tell us if you're mad or you're sad we always gave them that avenue to communicate because I wanted them to know they had a voice. Yes. And to add to that, not only let them speak, but don't react to it because a lot of people want to react and like fix it. And sometimes they just want to be heard. Yes. And that goes for marital advice as well. Guys, when your wife is mad at you or say something, you don't have to say, well, what about you? No, just sometimes they just want to vent and just listen to them. Mm -hmm. And just understand how your actions are making them feel. Yes. So this is a great conversation. I should have been recording this and put <laughs> on a podcast or something. This is awesome. <laughs> this is really awesome. I mean, somebody asked if we're going to do this again, and I'm totally down to do this again. This was great. Um, yes, so absolutely. somebody said, um, isn't it exceptionally difficult for kids to be shuffled between homes? Um, for for us personally, we run our homes the exact same way. Kids have the same rules at both homes. They have the same chores at both homes. Um, mm -hmm. We have an autistic child. So our autistic child has the same like learning games and books and everything at both homes. Um, so we're really consistent between our two houses. Um, I know that's that's hard for a lot of people um, for various reasons. But um, my kids love going to dad's house. Like, although we have the same structure, He's definitely like the more fun parent and I'm the one that has to like get stuff done. Um, mm -hmm. So they, my kids enjoy it. I, I don't think that my kids really have a problem unless they forget something at mom's house and they're going to be at dad's house for like three days. Then there's a problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a phone charger or like a game or things like yes. that. So, yeah. uh, someone said, I thought this was a podcast. A podcast I record on Friday. Somebody says I should record it. I'll talk to you off offline. Maybe you can download the video and send it to me and I can spice it together or something like that and go from there. Um, but 
for to answer the question for me, like I said, the ex-wife and I chose seven days on, seven days off. And I did see at times they were they were tired. And I remember feeling really guilty and horrible because, you know, they have all their bags, all their clothes every day. They have to pack. They can't settle in. And I remember telling her, the ex-wife, like, maybe we should do two weeks, uh, you know, at each place. I know I'm, it's going to hurt me not to see them, but I want to do what's best for them. But eventually, I, I remember t- asking them if they wanted to do that. And they both said, no, we're used to it. We're fine. We're fine. It was just, you know, as a parent, you see them weary carrying all these bags and stuff like that. Yeah. It really broke my heart at times. Um, but like I said, now my son stays with me full time and it's a daughter who goes back and forth. So kids are resilient and strong, stronger than you think. So please, if you're out there and you have children, and you're thinking about divorce, like we said, you know, be that role model. But kids are adaptable. They will. There will be a new normal if yeah. you just, you know, that'll happen. So don't worry, they'll be fine. And I think that, so if it's possible for people to like be lenient on time schedules, I think that that's best because sometimes my girls will be like, I just want to be with my dad. And I'm like, I respect that. So we don't have, um, we don't have that consistency that you guys have. We have it more like, um, if he wants to go do something like this weekend, he took the kids to go hang out with his girlfriend. Um, and that was totally fine with me. And sometimes my Mm -hmm. girls are like, we just want mommy time. We just want to cuddle with mom. So like we're both really easy with that if yeah, it's possible with, yeah yeah because i know there's some people i've seen some horrible videos you know where it's 4 30 he's supposed to be here right now like <sighs> come on oh god it's heartbreaking i think one as there's one dad in texas got shot the boyfriend shot the dad because it, it, it's it's a heartbreaking thing he didn't leave the property but he was there at 4 30 like hurry up you know my son i want my son out here he'll be here to five horrible situation but it broke my heart Oh my God. But yes, to your point, we are very flexible when it comes to the kids. Like there's days where like uh, we sun, Sundays is what we normally did the exchange. And sometimes um, like I either I had a date that Saturday, but I had the kids or vice versa. And I would tell her, well, just bring the kids. I have no plans this Saturday. You go drop them off and you go have a good time. And I'll we'll just go from there. We're very flexible with that. And I think um, Parents should model that and always and always keep, like we said before, over and over again, keep the kids first and yeah. put their needs first. And like you said, sometimes they want to be with daddy or mommy. So let, allow them to do that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's there's a time and a place where things have to happen on time. But, you know, like if my kids decided on the way home that they wanted to get ice cream with their dad. Am I really going to argue fun. with that? Absolutely not. Go have some ice cream with your dad and then you can come home. Yeah. So I think that, you know, if you have plans, obviously be respectful of people's time. But at the same time, like they're with their other parent, as long as they're safe and they're happy. What else can you ask for? Yeah, that's that's all that matters. They come first. Mm -hmm. They come first. Kids come first, everybody. Yeah. We have somebody here says, yes, record it. Yes, I'll figure something out. Yes. Uh, (laughs) I'm listening to this. It resonates. I have three special needs kids and I'm the one who is there. Oh my God. That's a lot on you. I'm sorry. Thanks. Like wow. Super mom. Yes. Kids come first. Um, suppose 18 doesn't want to be with one parent. Go from there. I'll go. But, uh, you go first. Um, okay. I don't, this is how I personally feel about this. Um, you're going to go spend time with your dad. If your dad is not abusing you, he's not harming you in any way, um, you need to spend that time with your dad. And if you're having an issue with your dad, you need to go work on it. And that's how I feel. People could really differ on that. But um, Mm -hmm. typically, if somebody doesn't want to be with their parent, they might be having like some issues there. um, And that may need to be talked out or worked out in some way. Yeah, very true. Uh, For me, it was uh, the ex-wife got engaged. And she she married her now husband. And her husband, like I said, a wonderful dude. He turned his office and his gym room to the kids' bedroom. So the kids have their own bedrooms over there. But I know my son was like very, like, I don't want to go there. I feel uncomfortable. So like we've always done, we've never forced a relationship for them to adjust or anything like that. Well, I'm like, well, so what do you want to do? He's like, I would prefer to stay here. And he has all his guitars here. He's got everything here. And um, I told the ex-wife, we all talked. I'm like, this is how he feels. What do you think? And that's how we arrived to the decision that he wanted to be here full time. But um, now I feel like uh, Lawrence Fishburne, you know, and, you know, boys in the hood. I'm like, you know, right, raising my son and being hard on him all the time. But uh, <laughs> that's a movie reference. I love movies. But uh, I feel like that sometimes because he's always with me, which is a good thing. And 
our relationship is like the closest it's ever been since then. That's awesome. And I guess that that's a different dynamic that we have because um, my kids don't go to a home with another person. It's just mom at one place and just dad. Yeah. And so I'm sure that my my mindset may change on that. Like if if my kid is uncomfortable around my ex's spouse, then obviously that'd be a different conversation. Um, so I think that that's, that might be a little circumstantial because um, if it's yeah. just your dad that you have a problem with, we're going to take you yeah. to the council. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And both my kids, not only myself, but my daughter goes to counseling as well. My son, he's fine. We we have very like a my my, my very um, our discussions are very open with my kids, so we're always talking, so they're fine. But yeah, therapy and counseling is a definite must. Um, let's see, do you have any questions on your side? How many people do you have on your side? Um, twenty four. I got thirty one. So cool. Nice. I guess we can continue to about maybe ten, if that's okay with you. Uh, it's, it's eight 40 here. It's nine 40. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 20 I had minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sorry. Um, let's see. let's see. How do you handle situations when your work schedule conflicts? Because I work at four 30. Um, well for me, our schedules, I, I guess we haven't impacted, but met that yet because, uh, we both have similar schedules, uh, you know, Monday through Friday, eight to five. And now with COVID, since COVID's happened, I work from home. My office is literally right there. So I take them to school. I pick them up and pick them up from practice. So it's been very, um, uh, having that flexibility definitely helps me on my end. You, you have the answer to that question? Yeah. My, so my situation is really tricky because my ex-husband works about an hour away from where I live. And since we have a child who's autistic, she's in three different forms of therapy, um, totaling about 37 hours a week of therapy. Um, wow. and because of that, I have to take on that load because my ex-husband just honestly can't with how far away he works. Um, so right now I make the sacrifice to be that person that has to be, you know, the taking to and from, but he makes up for it and he takes them more evenings during the week so that I can get things done without them. Um, mm -hmm. so we balance it that way. Um, and, yeah. and mine is temporary. So like my kid's only going to be in therapy for a few more months. So we, I've made that sacrifice to do it for this long. Um, so I think you just have to find like that balance. Yeah. And it it's can be tough. very difficult at times. And sometimes you have to make arrangements at work, call yeah. in. It can be very difficult at times when there's no wiggle room, but yeah, mm -hmm. luckily uh, we, I've had those situations, but for now I work from home and it's been very, um, it's been and plus they're old enough and they go to school and you know they're going to be driving soon so they're fine yeah that's nice uh, yeah i have well, a good one terrifying so at the same time <laughs> yeah right i know my yeah, daughter was like oh i'll be driving soon i can take the little one places i was like oh i don't know about that <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, you, you drive for a offering. couple of years first yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, somebody asked, uh, are there any things you wish you would have put in your parenting plan? Things that you were glad that you did. Um, I will mm. say something that I'm really glad. And I did very intentionally was that I put in there that my ex can see his kids whenever he wants to. Um, because at the time we lived in different States, I had full custody. Um, mm -hmm. so I made it very well known and I had it in writing that this did not mean that he could not see his kid. Cause we had to have like the parenting plan. Like you have them yeah. these days because he lives so far away. Um, mm -hmm. But in no way was that the only time he could have with his kids. Um, so yeah. I made that very, very clear. So that way he didn't feel like his kids were being taken from him. Yes. And with me as well, I think it was like a uh, chapter four subsection B where it gave us the freedom in Texas to um, do what we want as well. would have more or less said, and we said, let's go with that. We'll go with seven days on, seven days off, because I almost cried. I remember seeing like, what, I'm only going to see my kids two weekends a month? That's BS. And it's very specific as far as the time of drop off and the time of pick up. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's do seven days on. And we both agreed to that because she knows I'm a very involved dad. I mean, I, yeah. could, I could not live without them for seven days. I'd go yeah. insane. Yeah, like, absolutely. Go. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams is a good divorce movie. I show it to my kids. Do you recommend any? Oh my God. Uh, not for the kids, but you go first. <laughs> That's a bad. Ooh, uh, I don't have any, I don't think. I'm not, There's... I don't watch TV. You're not a TV guy? Oh my God. Yeah, I love movies. So I quote movies left and right. So that's my thing. Um, two movies that I recommend is 
marriage proposal or the marriage story with uh, Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver that came out a couple years ago. That is a very good realistic portrayal of divorce and co-parenting. Um, and their relationship at the end of the movie is very similar to what you said. And I said, you know, being flexible with the kids like, yeah, hey, you take them tonight. That's fine. OK, you know, I'll bring them over tomorrow. You know, it's, it's that the heartbreak of the divorce and then the co-parenting piece and the struggles with that, like especially on Halloween and things like that. Um, that's a really good movie. The other one that's not related to kids, but I just saw recently and it blew my mind is Blue Valentine with Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams. Uh, that film is the most accurate portrayal of a divorce ending. And it tells the audience that love is not enough to save a marriage, which is tough to explain. But when you see the film, love is not enough in most cases, in some cases, to save a marriage. And it's heartbreaking. And some of the dialogue back and forth they have in that scene, I was, I swear, like it was like verbatim what I was saying in the one mine was ending. So it's a deep movie. You have to be emotionally prepared to watch that because it's not an easy set. Mm. Those are, those are. So I will say, um, first, tatted girl dad, I love your content. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, do you follow him? He's awesome. I think that you guys would get along. I think you guys have very similar mindsets. Um, Who is this? Tatted girl dad. I don't know him. Tatted girl dad. Oh, no, I don't know him. I got to follow him. So Yeah, you do. He's awesome. Um, so back to like the parenting plan. Um, we do everything joint and I know this isn't possible for any other people either. Um, but all birthdays, um, all holidays, we spend everything together. And of course, again, we don't have that dynamic with like extra people, you know, marriages and whatnot. Um, we do have every intention of doing it that way. Um, yeah. but we try to do as much together as we can, just so that the kids don't miss out on those things or like somebody feel jaded that somebody missed somebody's birthday or something like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Quick story. I remember um, it was my son's birthday and my ex-wife had him and I've never missed her birthday. And she goes, well, she was seeing a guy at the time who was a big fisherman. She goes, well, so-and-so wants to take us to the lake to take him fishing. And you should have seen my face just turn beet red. <laughs> okay. You want to take my son fishing on his birthday? Uh, when am I going to see him? Well, you know, we'll be back that Monday. And I remember I just had to just swallow that pill and go, oh, is he, does he want to go? Yeah, he's looking forward to it. I'm like, okay, make sure he has a good time and I will see him Monday. And I remember that was a really hard birthday for me to kind of sit through. Uh, and it's not that I hated him or anything like that. It was just realizing that I wasn't going to see him for a birthday. So back to your point, I think it's very important uh, to, you know, see each other on holidays and birthdays because it's very important to the kids and to the, to the parents as well. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, any other questions here? I saw a good one here. How was it financially after the divorce? Uh, I'll answer that first. For me, luckily, I don't pay child support or alimony. There's no alimony in Texas or spousal support. So I don't pay child support. I told her what my plan was after the divorce. I told her this is what I want to do. You know, I didn't seize her 401k. She didn't seize my assets. It was just like 50-50. Whatever you worked for, that's yours. That's mine. I want to buy a house for the kids later on. So let's not ruin that for them. You can take all my money, but where does that leave me in the home and shelter that I can buy them? So let's just kind of keep it um, you know, balanced. And she agreed with that. So luckily, I didn't pay any. But I know for some men, it can be financially devastating. I don't know how some guys, how the court system expects men to survive when they're taking $1,100 out of their check. I mean, that leaves them practically nothing. It's heartbreaking when I see, when I hear those stories. Yeah, definitely. So we were the same as we split everything 50, 50. Um, and the same with like whatever you had before and whatever you worked for, we were the same way. Um, my ex at the time and still does pay me child support because I have to take on that extra responsibility with our little one. Um, and this doesn't say it in there, but I have told my ex once the kids, once our little one starts school, he won't be paying me child support anymore. And that'll get rewritten. So that way he doesn't get, you know, in trouble for just like not paying me. Um, but that's mm -hmm. something that we've worked out between the two of us because it does suck. Like he does have to pay me. And, but at the same time, like we have an autistic child who has all of this therapy yeah. that she goes to. Um, and he fully understands that. And he's amazing about it because he can't do it this with his schedule he can't um and fortunately he has a good enough job that he can help support 
um, me with this whole time that we're going through. But, um, but yeah, there's no intention of that lasting forever because I don't know. Yeah. I just, he sees them enough. It's not necessary. Yeah. Uh, any other questions on your end? I think I have one here, but I'll, I just want to be sure we uh, equally balance all the questions there. No, I don't think so. Let's see here. Jason Bill, he's been pretty vocal here. Uh, he's, let's see what question he's got. Jason, I'm getting to you in a second. He says, way too many divorces. We are going to see less and less marriages in the future, possibly. I blame social media for that and some of these red pill idiots, but that's just me because, again, like I said, um, if you view my page, again, my marriage ended, but I'm not one of the, those advocates that says marriage is a bad thing. Guys don't do it. You know, women want one thing. I'm not that jerk, that idiot. I just think people need to be smarter and be a lot more patient with who they select going into a marriage. And again, if you know deep in your heart that if you're in an emergency room and you wake up and you see your wife or fiance there at your bedside holding your hand, you know you got somebody that's going to last and be there through you through the tough time. So I think uh, with all our stories, I hope it teaches people how to really look out for the small things because the small things really do add up if you ignore them and going into a marriage, like you said, blindly. So um, I hope that's not the case, but probably there will be less and less. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen those TikToks and those stories. Yeah. And, you know, part of me thinks like I, I will get married. I hope that I get married again one day, but I don't think like marriage is necessary. Like having the government have control over your life isn't really yeah. necessary. <laughs> like yeah. you can commit yourself to somebody. You can say vows and exchange rings and you then you don't have to deal with the government, you know? So I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't feel like it's necessary, but I also don't want to say like, it's a terrible thing either. Cause I would totally get married again. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Like, like I said, I'm just not, I'm not there yet for me. You know, the funny thing is for me is that, like I said, I got married at 21. Right. And I was married to one person practically 20 years if you have the dating. So at 39, I finally had an opportunity to see what I liked. And as you mentioned earlier, who am I? What do I like? What, what is my identity? You don't know who you are because you're, you're a wife and a mother for, for so many years. Like for me, I was a father and a husband for so many years. I didn't know what Rudy was or what I liked. So I remember finding that it was pretty terrifying at first with the first few months after the divorce. But when you find yourself, you find a new group of friends, you find things that you are experiencing that you didn't know you would love, but here you are like two-stepping, you know, <laughs> you're just like, wow, it's like, I'm actually finding out what I love. And this is awesome. And it's like, for me, marriage, like I said, I, I maybe later on, but for me, it's like, I want to really focus on me and, you know, continue with this content, maybe write a book here and there, but it's it's when you find your passion in your niche, it's it's a it's a addictive thing, especially when you're making differences in people's lives. So one day I'll think about it, but it's not on the radar. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like I'm like open to it, but it's not like I'm like, this is what I'm looking for. Like right now, because I yeah. am also currently writing a book. You too? Oh I God. am. Yes. And I love it. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be done because I have a lot going on, but I, you know, add to it when I can. So. Hopefully someday That's soon. So cool. Well, I definitely have to talk to you offline because I have like a manuscript like on my desktop, but I don't know even know how to begin reaching out to people. So we'll talk about that uh, later That's on. That's good. so yes. cool. Yeah, yeah, I got tons of stories. Yeah. Me too. Uh, Me too. <laughs> <laughs> have your children discussed their marriage relationship plans with you? I guess you can answer that first. Um, as in, like, are my kids going to get married one day? Is that, is that what they're asking? Yeah. Yeah, that's like it's kind of big. Now that I read that out loud, I'm like, okay, yeah, have your children um, discuss their marriage relationship plans with you. Yeah, I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah, so my older one at first, she was like, I'm never getting married. Um, but uh, I think she's open to it now, you know, she sees our relationship. Um, but you know, she's also 14, so who knows? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, I have night marriage. Uh, says, can you give a shout out to V from Nebraska? There's your shout out from Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't see any other questions here, but uh, in, oh, we still got a few minutes. I don't want to let you go yet. This is too fun. So um, let me ask you about TikTok. Um, how do you, what do you think about TikTok? I mean, uh, you, you seem like you, you found an audience, you're having fun. Uh, what are your long-term plans with this? 
Um, uh, you know, that's, I love that question because people ask me all the time. They're like, uh, why do you do this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. because, um, I want to reach as many people as I can. I want to, um, show people my mindset as much as I possibly can try to change the narrative as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and just grow this to reach people. And, um, I have like this, this thing inside me where I want to reach so many women and just tell them like, it's going to be okay. And, um, you can be softer without giving up who you are. Um, yeah. and so that's kind of my next thing that I'm going to be steering towards is like more geared towards women and their femininity and, um, and accepting things. Uh, so that's kind of like my long-term thing and just growing this as much as I can and mm -hmm. seeing where it takes me. Are you going to do, I think I saw somewhere that you may be doing coaching already or signing up or yes. starting a coaching yep. program. Yeah, I've started coaching people, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I call it life after heartache coaching. Um, I didn't want to like gear it just towards divorce people because there's a lot of people yeah. who are just in relationships. And um, I work a lot on confidence mindset and just like getting back to who you are, because I mm -hmm. realized I was talking to one girl who was in a relationship with another female and she broke her down a lot to the point where she couldn't even interview for jobs because her confidence was so broken. Wow. Yeah. And so, so that's something that I, I work on with people is just like their overall confidence and like life because it can, it can break you down to like all levels of your life. So it's, it's a really cool thing that I'm doing with people. And I, I love, I get off phone calls and I'm like, I love what I do so much. That's so cool. That's so <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's awesome. I tried that. I remember like last year, this time last year, I built a website and said, if you want uh, coaching, you know, reach out to me here. I had like fees and everything kind of built out already. I spent like two months on this website. And I think I got, no, I don't think, I know I got ahead of myself because when people started reaching out to me and I had maybe three people that I was working with, I realized I wasn't prepared and I felt like it was a disservice to them. So I didn't charge them or anything like that. I, I've still talked to a couple. Um, uh, I still talk to all of them as a matter of fact, but it's like, I knew I wasn't giving them the best information that I possibly could. And it got a little deep. I remember one of them, you know, was contemplating suicide and I'm like, oh my God, I don't. Here I am, kind of like the way your dad didn't give you uh, marital advice because he didn't want to give you the wrong advice. Here I am, like, what if I give this guy the wrong advice and he does something horrible? So I knew at that point I wasn't ready. So uh, I definitely want to get more certificates and get more, I guess, licenses, more experience with that to do that because I could not live with myself if I gave somebody the wrong advice. So I, I took that website down and I took a step back. But definitely, um, I didn't have that we should talk about that offline too. Cause I've taken some really phenomenal coaching courses. Um, so okay. we'll talk about that offline. Cause yeah, that's a whole, I love it. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely book all these courses. Yeah. I love this. Uh, <laughs> one last question here. Um, I have such a hard time reading the usernames because there's no under spaces or score sometimes. Uh, this one girl messaged me. I just want to let you know, you said my name wrong two weeks ago. And you really hurt my feelings. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Canadian wonder, like whatever her name was. <laughs> I felt bad. And I have a slight case of dyslexia. So sometimes I say things incorrectly because the letters get jumbled, especially when they're yeah. moving. Like, ah. anyway, yeah. question. Do you guys have, excuse me, do you guys, do you guys have no contact orders anytime during the divorce? I didn't. Did you? No, absolutely not. Yeah. And the next question is, how did you deal with that? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I have no experience with that, so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Well, last marriage is so overrated. They should make it a law to have marriage counseling before signing. They should. I, that's one thing I've been thinking about is starting like some sort of like boot camp for marriage. Like, oh, you think you're ready? OK, half of you are going to like cancel your wedding after you're done with this camp. Like, you know, give them like yes. the real deal. That's what I definitely would. uh I have been working on that as well, but I think um, if there was a course like that that was available for me, I think I went on a church retreat, which really didn't do nothing for us. But if there was a course like that, I think I would have taken out the opportunity to sign up and see if we're ready, truthfully ready. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to do, I don't know if you had to do parenting courses when you were getting divorced, like our state made us do like a parenting, co-parenting course. No. Um, no. We should have been doing that before we had kids. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Not way after. Like, God, what was these resources before? Oh, my God. But um, 
V, this was awesome. I definitely, yes. definitely want to do this again. Um, I do have a podcast we record uh, every Friday, so I'll get with you to maybe schedule some time so we can actually talk about this and put it up on the, you know, and uh, on, on Apple and everything because this was a lot of great information, a wealth of information. And again, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I also don't even know how to end this. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. I think there's an end button down below. Uh, Is it the no, power I button? Know. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> no, I don't want to match you. That's like a a game match. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'll figure this out. Stand by. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So I'm gonna disconnect now. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.